Because, because they save a lot on the you know, the CPF, the levy and all this, you see. So I think it, to be fair, to be a level playing thing, they should uh, give it back to our Singaporeans, you know. And I believe that they have not done, uh, the government have not done this uh, job statistics, employment stat, uh, statistics uh, mm. since some time. And there was 55% of uh, Singaporeans having uh, are employed and 45% uh, given to foreigners. Correct me if I'm wrong, Josephine, Mr. Minister. Josephine, uh, would you like a quick response before I move on to yeah, the other Yeah, I'd part, just like please. to point out two things. Uh, we can certainly stop foreign workers from coming to Singapore, right. but we cannot stop companies from leaving. So I think a very important point is to ask ourselves, in terms of the way that we manage the economy, how can we allow companies and businesses to selectively employ foreign workers for the benefit of growing the Singapore economy, for the benefit of our incomes rising? One small point that I want to just point out. In manufacturing operations in Singapore, mm -hmm. typically 80% of the operators are non-Singaporeans. In other words, many of the low-end jobs are done by the foreigners. Yeah. But guess what? 80% of the managerial jobs in finance, in administration, the technicians, the engineers, those 80% are Singaporeans. If you tell these companies that they can't continue their operations here because we're going to stop the inflow of foreign workers completely, then these 80% Singaporeans will equally lose their jobs. Nazim, and that's a question we have to think about. Sorry. Uh, we should target the industry that we <coughs> to come in, to, come in to, to, to import these foreign workers. Targeted industry. Uh, manufacturing is one of it, I will agree, but then again, it'll be, it'll be said it's too much. I think most of our Singaporeans also have that, that, uh, that urge to, to work other than uh, service industry and, and so on and so forth. So I think we should target, target those industries like construction. Most of us, which do not want, probably we can just get them in. But then again, now we are, we are getting professionals, expats in the managerial, I mean, uh, those uh, professionals in uh, banking. If I think those, our own GICs having foreigners to be CEOs or chairmen, if correct me if I'm wrong. So, are we not good enough as Singaporeans to to be in in these sectors? Gerald, we've yet to hear from yeah. you, the Workers' Party. Well, I, firstly, I want to take issue with uh, the point that Josephine met, said about we are shutting the doors of foreign workers. I don't think any party over here wants to close the doors of foreign workers. In fact, Workers' Party is not an anti-immigrant party. But we welcome foreigners to come in when they are able to contribute to the skills and, and the, the skills pool in Singapore. However, we believe that the rate of immigration should not exceed our country's capacity and infrastructure to absorb them. And it should not ex exceed uh, our ability of our people to be able to integrate, uh, for them to integrate with our people. And so they should be admitted primarily into positions which Singaporeans are unable to fill. To fill, to fill. And to do that, we need, we need to reduce the reliance on foreign workers by increasing our productivity so that, and, and more automation so that um, uh, we don't have to bring in, we don't have to have all these labour inputs, but we can have productivity increases to be able to uh, increase our, our output. And I believe that when productivity increases and, and people's salaries rise, it would be easier to fill a lot of these positions with Singaporeans rather than having to uh, uh, fill it with uh, low-wage foreigners. So Vincent, Gerald, your point of view? I just want to point um, out should, should we just let Vincent um, have his savers and we'll sure. give you time to I'm respond. happy for Josephine to respond to that and then I can come in if that's okay. okay. Just very quickly, um, you are uh, exactly right in pointing out uh, the measures that are already in place in terms of focusing on productivity and also in introducing better controls on the quality of the foreign manpower that we're bringing in. But one important point is that our un unemployment rate today is 2.1%. And if you think about the challenges that the companies face in growing and expanding, I think that's also something that we have to bear in mind. Okay, we have only about 30 seconds left mm -hmm. for Vincent. Yeah. Well, uh, from the SDP's point of view, um, uh, the, the key issue for Singaporean workers is the fact that Singaporean workers are being displaced because of cheap, uh, uh, cheaper foreign workers. You know, you're, you're, you can pay a foreign worker much less than you would pay a Singaporean worker. The SDP advocates a Singaporean's first policy, which is in many, many countries where, you know, you, you have to demonstrate why a foreign worker uh, has to be brought into your firm before you're able to employ that. Worker. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for all your views, Minister. Would you like to respond to all the views that have been <clears throat> said so far? Whatever we do, let's not harm the economy and reduce the number of jobs available for Singaporeans. That's critical. 
let's make sure that we provide good jobs for all Singaporeans. And that means whichever industry you look at, manufacturing, logistics, F&B, finance, when you talk to any business, they'll need Singaporeans, quality Singaporeans, and they need quality foreigners. They go together. It's not a zero-sum game. With the foreigners, we create more jobs for Singaporeans. And that's been the story of the last 10 years. In the last five years, we had many more foreigners coming in, but we brought unemployment down to 2%. That's virtually full employment for Singaporeans. And we raised wages, including wages for those at the very bottom, at the same time that we brought in foreigners. So let's keep economic growth healthy and sustainable so that we can keep creating good jobs for Singaporeans rather than try to squeeze companies the wrong way. Singaporeans first, that's exactly what the quota system does today for any employer before he can be considered for eligibility to hire a foreigner, he has to show that he already has Singaporeans on his payroll and I think that dependency ratio varies from sector to sector for those sectors where fewer Singaporeans are keen to work then the dependency ratio can be higher, but otherwise actually it favours Singaporeans. Okay, we have about half a minute left for Minister. No, I just wanted to say I'm glad that Mr Giam emphasised productivity. That's very important and I'm glad that the Workers' Party is taking that stand, that raising productivity and skills is the way to go. That's how we're going to raise incomes across the board. Let's focus on that task. It's hard work. It's not a speech, it's not even a policy, it's hard work on the ground, working with companies, unions and workers to improve the quality of every job. Let's focus on it. I want to say very quickly that you know we productivity have, in the PAP, uh, productivity measures have failed these 27 years, we have, so we need to look at a different okay, way. We have time for you to talk again after the okay. break. Um, thank you. We have to go for a short break now, but do stay with us. When we come back, we'll be looking at what each party plans to do to address the short and long-term issues we've discussed so far. Now we've heard from the representatives from the five parties on the short and long-term challenges facing Singapore. Now let's hear from each party representative on what each party has to offer to voters to address the issues discussed earlier. Now you all have two minutes each, so let's start with PAP's uh, Mrs. Josephine Teo. Thank you very much. I kind of think of uh, the Singapore story as a book and we're all co-authors in it. At the beginning, there were many plot twists and at some points in our earlier chapters, it looks like there was not going to be an ending, but as Singaporeans, we defied the odds, we overcame and we are here today. The current chapter, in fact, contains some really quite frightening moments, including SARS and the global financial crisis. But again, Singaporeans stay united and we will end this chapter on high note. What will the next chapter be like? I think it depends on us, the co-authors. It is true that we will have some unfinished business from the current chapter. For example, our economic transformation is still a work in progress. We want our low-wage workers to do much better. We want to help older workers sustain the workforce. We don't have enough babies. We want to help the women to balance work and family much better. And we also want ageing Singaporeans to continue to live well. But we are starting from a position of strength and there are many positives that we can build on. Our education system has provided many more pathways to excellence for our younger people. Our Singapore brand is helping Singapore businesses succeed overseas. Our arts and cultural scene has become so much more vibrant than when I was a young person. So in my mind, I think the next chapter can be exciting, satisfying for all Singaporeans. If we are able to forge a common vision and stay together, we can build a Singapore and let our children and their children inherit a much better Singapore than we inherited from Josephine, our parents. Josephine, thank you very much. Your time is just up. Um, Nazim of SDA, your okay. two minutes start now. For the SDA, we have set out our manifesto and plans for Singapore. As much as the high cost of living is now that currently the people are facing, we will address that when we are in Parliament. So. The plans will be 
right now is that the high cost of living does not equal the increase in wage, which the government policy is at a setback right now. The housing issues which will be addressed by the SDA, the healthcare issues, I believe the ruling parties or the opposition, we have a common vision here for the Singapore people, Singapore for Singaporeans. And the foreign influx of uh, foreign workers in Singapore need to be tightened up. As such that the SDA have plans for the people of Singapore to, to voice out the people's uh, vision and to give a, a, a platform, to give space for the people to voice out their grievances for the, to the government. Lastly, I think the economic uh, structure that the government is putting up is more commercial rather than public interest. So I believe the public interest should come first before the commercial values that you're going to project to the world. Likewise, the, the public housing issue have been, have been on a commercial basis right now. So we want to address that to the government that please, public is public issues, not commercial, or it should be on public interest. Then again, uh, the healthcare is also a, a very much uh, problem to people. We heard their, their grievances, grievances, but then the government does not do much or not enough to address this and to solve their problem. So to me, I think SDA have a plan, we'll address that to the government, be it in parliament or out of parliament for the people of Singapore. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much, Nazim. Uh, Vincent, thank your you, two yeah. minutes to speak for SDP starts now. I want to just pick up one.